Eric asks me, what are the most common and most difficult hurdles in medical malpractice or birth injury cases? Thanks, Eric. Well, so to maintain a birth injury or a medical malpractice case, you need, the first thing you need to do is make sure that there is breach of the standard of care. I mean, if the doctors or nurses who provided the care um, breached a standard breach or were negligent in providing care, um, there are standards in birth injury cases for how, for monitoring heart strips, making sure that the child is not having decelerations in their heartbeats, make sure there's no um, uh, uh, fetal distress in a child, in a in utero child, making sure that there's no hypoxic, ischemic, or encephaloptic or encephalop encephalopathy type of injury to the child. Um, and then that's why doctors do cesarean sections, is that if there is a lack of oxygen in the baby during that birth time, it's a dangerous time for children um, and moms, as we know. Um, but for children, they can they can have a um, an oxygen insult deprivation of deprivation of oxygen to them that can cause brain injury to children at that time. And that's what the birth, typical birth injury is another type of birth injury often is a brachial plexus injury where the doctor <coughs> is not um, maneuvering the the shoulder in a birth that can go up against a pubic bone typically and can get caught and then the shoulder gets caught the doctor yanks too hard and the nerves are ripped out from the child's spinal column and that's called a brachial plexus or a nerves palsy injury those are the two most common birth injuries that we typically see there could be others, we see others. Um, and then in medical malpractice cases, that can run the gamut of other types of medical malpractice cases. But the challenge is, number one, there's, there's four main challenges. Number one is making sure that there's medical negligence, a medical uh, error, a standard of care that was developed and it is the standard of care that everybody should get and the doctor or the nurse or the medical provider will not prevent it or provide it. Sometimes in nursing homes, it's, just, it's medical aids and not actually nurses who are providing the care. Number two is you then, if, if once you vet that, when you make sure that that is true, you, you hire a doctor to give you a, or a nurse to give you a written opinion. It has to be in the same specialty. The nurse you hire, the doctor you hire has to be in the same specialty as the doctor you're going against. And then you need to have them review all the records and have them write an opinion letter, a letter, it's called a letter of merit or a letter saying that there was medical malpractice and that that malpractice caused or contributed to cause the injury of the person. That gets to our third point, and that is that to be able to win a, a medical malpractice case, you have to prove that the negligence caused or, or contributed to cause the injury or death in a person. And many times that's where these cases are aggressively defended. They are defended on the standard of care, but sometimes the standard of care they, they, that we know that the doctor really didn't uh, uh, follow the standard of care. The question is to make sure that that error caused the injury of the person. Let me give you an example. If you break your arm and you go to the emergency room, they don't diagnose you. Then that day you go to the emergency room. The next day they diagnose you with a broken arm. They put you in a cast. Although the first hospital should have diagnosed you with that broken arm on an x-ray, they didn't. However, so that's malpractice, arguably, right? However, there's no causation of damage because the next day you went, got it diagnosed, and then you followed the getting your treatment and you were treated for the broken arm. So there was no cause that negligence on the first day going to the ER did not cause you injury or damage because you were able to do it the next day. Um, and then fourth is there's limitations on damages. The other challenge in medical malpractice cases, there's limitations on damages that you can get. Um, in Missouri, we have caps on damages. In Illinois, there's other constraints on damages. It's not as stringent as Missouri or even near, but there's other things. So there are limitations on damages of not economic damages or damages you can prove from a causation point of view. So those are the most challenges in Eric in the in the hurdles uh, and those things. Um,